Hi. So I'd like to talk about why I drink camel urine. Um, <laughs> before you freak out, so I'm a farm girl now. I was raised in Manhattan, New York City, and I, I chucked my old life to go live on a farm in Indiana and have horses and camels and wolves and exotic animals and we're doing a therapy program with them. Um, we actually have a 501c called the Animal Connection for people struggling with substance abuse and PTSD. Anyway, with that said, um, I we bought our first camel approximately six months ago and I noticed that the camel prices for female camels went from like five thousand to tw you know twelve to twenty thousand dollars. Like, what is going on here? And what we surmised is the exploding, booming market of camel milk. And I looked up the technology. And I'd like to sort of preference this uh, with my father was a biochemist for a Nobel Prize winning team way back in the 70s under Rosalind Yalo. And while I am not a biochemist, I'm not, um, I don't have a medical uh, MD degree, he did teach me how to decipher reading peer review studies. Um, and sort of wavery information from more solid information. Now, what's interesting about the camel urine is welcome to nano antibody technology. The camel has an oval shaped blood platelet. It is the only mammal, the camelid family, I should say, uh, alpacas, llamas, um, I believe sharks are the only other um, mammal that have that. And that's that right there is extremely unusual, yeah? So there's something something special about the camel, or the camelid family, the shark family. But no one's milking a shark anytime soon. Um, and not only that, so what they've discovered, and I'll just kind of say it in layman's terms, and I'll put all uh, links to... Um, the studies that uh, I deemed were legitimate and solid underneath this video, that camel urine, camel milk, have nano antibodies. That means the antibodies for humans, for example, are maybe like this big, right? Uh, and I'm kind of paraphrasing. And the nanobodies for the antibodies for in camelid family are like this big. So they can slip in through the membrane of a cancer cell, of a tumor cell, of any autoimmune uh, rooted issue that needs an antibody that can connect with a peptide and slip in there. It's sort of like a, not really like a Trojan horse. It's not fooling anybody, but it's able to penetrate the membrane and eradicate the cell with this antibody techno, um, power or simply bring in a peptide into it and um, do some good damage um, where a, a normal human antibody would not. So that's really fucking interesting, right? Um, they also, there's tons of myriads of companies now that are popping up that are show videos. It's hilarious with, uh, like a little outline of an alpaca and how they're injecting the blood out of the alpaca to, well, you know, not going to send you alpaca urine, right? They're going to make it nice and neat. Um, so, and they're taking the and the nano antibodies from the, the blunt and sending it to labs to develop, uh, I guess, uh, cures or vaccines or, um, forgive my um, lack of medical terminology perfection, um, to fight the flu, to fight uh, cancer. So there's all these companies popping up and, and you know, they're well-funded. Uh, so why is that? Uh, if there's nothing to it, right? Um, and further, there's tons of articles popping up too in, in relatively um, substantial news sites. 
some very substantial, saying that the alpaca is like the answer to the flu because of this nano and this nano antibody that can slip through the membrane when um, all antibodies cannot, from what I understand. So another interesting fact is Muhammad in the Quran. I don't care what religion you are, but um, it's interesting that this is an old, old tradition. And these are legends and stories. And how, how are we to be, uh, especially Americans in 2019, so arrogant to say that these people's stories and these people's traditions um, that have survived centuries mean nothing. You know, they're based on nothing. Throw them away. I think that's pretty arrogant. So I, I believe that there's some validity there to why Muhammad or why that story was written in the Quran or written in a very um, old, uh, what's the word, manuscript, okay, um, and that's lasted this long. Now, Muhammad mentioned the camel, from what I understand, before the sun, before the moon, uh, before the mountains, and he said, any man that is sick, drink the urine or the milk of a camel. So that's, yes, it's poetic, right? There's no scientific uh, basis to it, but um, interesting nonetheless. So this is what I collected today for my camel Camus. Yes, his name is after the philosopher Camus, Camus the camel. And uh, I'll slip in a picture if I, if I can get some editing things. Now, I kind of, I'm, I'm always farmed out in like really shitty you know, dirty clothes all the time. I don't really care. I look, so I, I dressed up for you guys because <laughs> I'm doing something so gross. So I thought it would maybe off put it. Um, this is what I collected from Camus today. I stood behind him in a stall and I feed him grain and he usually, uh, pees after that. And I kind of, you know, don't give him stage performance fright and look around, pretend I'm not paying attention. And I kind of sneak in there. So, I am going to put this in a glass of, um, in, a, in a nice wine glass for you. Are <laughs> you ready to throw up? Now, I have to say, it tastes horrible. Horrible. The worst thing you've ever, it tastes like if somebody took all the smell from uh, a barn. All the, like the hay, the must, the manure, and put it into a serum. It's horrible, but afterwards, it's sort of it, it's sort of like re, re, revitalizing, uh, kind of like a, e eating a fresh oyster with fresh minerals. Now, of course, it could be imagining, but eh, I don't think so. And I ha I should say that I'm a very high strung person. Um, I get sick all the time. You know, there's a flu across the street. I get it. So since I've been drinking camel urine during flu season, and especially if someone in my household, my kids or something are sick, I swear I really haven't gotten the flu. Um, so is it mind over matter? I don't know. But anyway, that's, mm, it's been working for me. So I'm going to try to cut it with some gin non-alcoholic ginger beer here, which is probably not, it probably needs gasoline to cut it. It's so horrible. But anyway, <laughs> bear with me. So if you haven't left already, so let's, let's see if this works and it's probably going to make it taste worse. I know it. I probably should have just been a, you know, been brave and done it in one shot. Um, okay. As you can see, like the little, the little hay specks. I guess that fell off of his body when I was collecting it. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Well, um, so I'll try to make this as charming as possible, which is going to be hard. I know. Ah! Pretty bad. But you know what? The ginger beard actually. So now, okay. So now it tastes like alka seltzer mixed with a with like a kind of a medicine taste it doesn't taste like that overwhelming barn like must so i guess the ginger did cut it a little bit oh god okay ah okay but 
it's like I feel, but it, it, I really feel the, it, it, you know, it's almost like being in New Orleans and you're tasting fresh oysters. You feel that, you know, right out of the sea mineral burst so it doesn't have time to, um, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's very effervescent. Um, I can, I can sort of feel its power, if you will. And again, this, that's, my feelings are not scientific. I understand that, but I'm trying to be as uh, straightforward as possible. Um, I would suggest trying it, especially there's been, uh, some good clinical trials or some good, um, research on the possibility of really helping autism because they think it might be related to immune immune issues um and tumors cancer uh e even arthritis it has anti-inflammatory properties anyway n google nano antibody technology or vh uh vhh so it um it's a heavy chain link antibody um, I, I don't know if I said that correctly, but it's probably because I'm, I don't know, it's my first video, I'm a little nervous. So, uh, what else could I say about it? Okay, let's take another drink. Oh, damn it. Ah, getting better. I can, <laughs> can I drink this in polite company without a face? I don't know, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not that, um, I haven't, uh, uh, emotionally prepared myself for that yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason why I'm drinking it now actually is because a lot of people in my uh, house have the stomach flu and I haven't gotten it yet. And I've been drinking this, this stuff. So you know what? You be the judge. I'll connect you to every article that I found substantial or interesting and some of the labs that are, you know, taking out the alpaca blood nano antibodies and serving it to other labs to experiment with. Um, and you be the judge, but all I can say is that I've been doing it for about four months now. I always get sick. I haven't changed anything else in my lifestyle. In fact, my lifestyle has gotten more stressful. I'm studying to be um, a, a psychotherapist and I'm in school for that. And it's just, the workload is getting harder and harder, and harder. I have screaming babies. Um, I'm also, uh, I breed high end horses. So I'm like involved with that. I'm starting a 501 C. I just, we just got our government, um, approval and building a website. I have a lot of stuff going on and I'm old. I'm, four, I'm 41. So this, I, I, I really, this has only been the only factor that has changed in my life for the better. Everything else has gotten more stressful. I haven't taken any other supplements. So, you know, like I said, it could be mind over body, but it's, it, it's been working for me. So anyway, you be the judge. I'll connect you to the research and um, I don't know. Try it. It's horrible, but try it.